to welcome dr n v k mohan because uh, he will be here to share and enlighten us about the problems related to your nose and throat because we often i i feel that we often neglect this key organs of our body we uh start taking care of these ear nose and throat when they give us alarms not before that so uh without wasting much time i would like to welcome on behalf of all of us dr mohan to uh, enlighten us with his any uh, illuminating deliberation thank you thank you uh, it is uh, over thank you so much for the head of the department of food and nutrition and organizer of health unit to conduct the session thank you thank you so, so much madam a very good evening and warm welcome to our today's webinar on taking care of ear nose and throat jointly organized by department of food and nutrition hiralal mazumdar memorial college for women dokhineshwar and sikke billa hospital kolkata it is wonderful to have you all in this platform we have with us our eminent speaker today it's an honor for me to introduce our keynote speaker dr nvk mohan Dr Mohan has over 25 years of experience in ENT practice. Previously, he worked as an assistant professor ENT at Kameni Institute of Medical Sciences of Narkatpolli and SVS Medical College, Mahabubnagar. Dr Mohan has worked in tertiary referral hospital in UK for 4 years. Dr Mohan is a member of many professional bodies we are extremely fortunate to have you sir with us so over to sir for his keynote address sir please thank you very much mr shah for a uh, very uh, kind uh, and uh, generous uh, introduction thank you very much for uh, dr ghosh uh, for uh, having me here uh, and uh, a big thanks to Uh, the organizers and uh, the staff of Hiralal uh, Mohanjodar Memorial uh, uh, College for uh, you know women in Kinnishal for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, be present in front of you. It's a prestigious organization and such uh, you know uh, stalwarts of uh, part of this uh, college. So it's indeed an honor for me to be addressing all you all of you today. Uh, <clears throat> Firstly, let me say that uh, I wanted to keep this, uh, you know, uh, talk today uh, very basic, so that uh, you know uh, it doesn't make any point, you know, uh, uh, batching uh, a group of uh, people with uh, knowledge that they wouldn't uh, be able to, you know, uh, use uh, in day-to-day -day life. Instead, I thought it would be better to take this opportunity to, uh, you know, appraise you as. you know staff and students and uh, you know uh, luminaries of the, the society about what are the common problems uh, that to come to us with, uh, in the ear nose and throat and like uh, dr ghosh very rightly said uh, i mean the ear nose and throat are indeed pretty neglected unfortunately it's very very really unfortunate uh, i mean say for example if uh, suddenly if i were to you know have a problem with my Uh, vision in my right eye or in my my both my eyes, I would immediately rush to the hospital straight away. I wouldn't wait for a second. But if I have a problem with my hearing, I say can't touch it. It's all legal. So they can. But they are giving me a short delay. Which is cool. Which is at a very good price. I mean, we kind of postpone. We kind of take it very easily. It is not until we actually reach the hospital that we realize sometimes that this this is actually a medical emergency. 
So I, I thought it, it's very uh, you know, uh, pertinent that we should uh, talk about how to care for our ear, nose, and throat on day-to-day -day, uh, life things. So if I may start uh, my presentation, can I share my presentation? Hello? May I present, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll let me share. Can you see my uh, presentation? No, sir. No, sir. It's not visible. Okay, I, I'm not very. Uh, Okay, so uh, yes, sir, it is Can visible now. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, caring for your ear, nose, and throat. So, first and first and foremost, let's come to the ear. Right. Uh, it is such a common thing to you know. Uh, see people uh, try and clean their ears uh, after a bath. They put water in the ears and uh, want to actually wash the ear, clean the ear. And uh, these cotton buds are such a common sight in the uh, Indian household. So why the panic cotton bud method like safety thing is safe. They are putting uh, safety things or even hair clips, uh, even keys, uh, matchsticks, whatever. First and foremost, it is such a big big mistake. I mean, you should not be cleaning your ears. In fact, uh, you know, uh, it, it is such a, uh, you know, uh, uh, wonderful organ, the way uh, the Almighty has created the uh, ear is that, uh, you know, any dirt that accumulates in the ear is actually pushed out on its own. So wax does not need to be cleaned. And the most important thing is wax. Can it be cleaned? Uh, yeah, it's the sediment, it is actually a protective, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is protective for the ear. It has antimicrobial activity and uh, also it moisturizes the ear canal. So, uh, I mean, you know, a simple uh, uh, example is uh, in the winter, uh, after a bath, what do we do? We apply a moisturizer or we actually apply oil even before the bath or after the bath. So, why do we do that? We moisturize the skin. Similarly, the skin in the ear. How does it get moisturized? That it is the sediment that the ear produces that moisturizes the ear. Not just moisturizes the ear, it actually has antimicrobial activity and prevents any infection. So when we routinely try to clean the ear, what we are doing is we are robbing the ear of this protective uh, you know, uh, entity. Uh, and, uh, and in doing so, what we end up doing is sometimes we make the ear dry, which makes it itch even more. Also, uh, with uh, you know, vigorous and very uh, zestful cleaning of the ear, you can end up injuring the ear canal, which can lead to bleeding. And in diabetics, it can lead to infection because we have cleaned the ear, we have removed the protective uh, function of the uh, wax. So that's why, right. and if there's an injury, then that can uh, get infected. And in diabetics, this can become very, very dangerous. You can have cellulitis, you can have uh, infection of the whole side, that side of the face. And in fact, the ear is, uh, uh, you know, designed in such a way that if there is any dust that goes into the ear, that actually comes out slowly with time. The uh, wax that is produced or the skin that is shed from the deepest part of the external canal that actually comes out to the exterior. And this, the skin that is being discommitted, that is carried by the uh, 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 cerumen to, and uh, expelled out. So. Do not clean the ears, not even with cotton buds with, or with anything at all. What we are going to do is, uh, I mean, there are some people, of course, uh, who have uh, allergies, uh, uh, I mean, uh, itchy eyes, ears, nose, all of that. These people can produce excessive wax. Also, some people who have excessive hair in their ear or have narrow ear canals, they have a tendency to wax build up. And uh, these are the kind of patients who need their ears clean, but not by themselves. Because if you're trying to clean your ear, you will end up only pushing the wax and the debris further in 
but you will not be able to remove it. So that actually causes greater problems rather than helping. So uh, do not clean the ears. So these are the people who need to uh, visit the doctor regularly and uh, you know, uh, prevent dryness of the ear by uh, cleaning the ears. Um, for someone, for people who have dryness of the ear, who have itching of the ear, there's one little thing that you can do, I'll tell you. And this is for people who do not have uh, you know, routine uh, ear uh, problems. Uh, I mean, who do not have infections or not have any history of infection or anything else, no pus discharge, no hearing loss. What you can do is you can uh, put two drops of light, pure light olive oil, pure, pure olive oil, the pomice oil or the one that you use for cooking, not the virgin or extra virgin olive oil. It is a pure light olive oil, the one that you use for frying. So you can put two drops of uh, light olive oil in the ear once or twice a week. That will keep the ear moisturized and uh, uh, it will uh, prevent any itching. So that is one very important thing that you should keep in mind. Uh, let's come to hearing loss. Now, uh, 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 I mean, in today's day and age, it's been two years that uh, you know uh, most of your teachers and students have been, you know, forced to, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 take online classes and you know spend hours together on the uh, uh, headphones uh, uh, on in front of the camera hmm? in, uh, in the headphones. Some, something that we have all the while been, uh, you know. Uh, advising our children against hear ourselves having encouraged our children to hear, uh, hear headphones and you know attend classes. It's a very unfortunate situation that we are in. Hopefully, uh, we are seeing the end of it. But uh, a little bit about this. Uh, see, I mean, prolonged uh, you know exposure to the sounds above seventy decibels. Uh, regularly can lead to hearing loss and uh, you know uh, sounds above 85 decibels can actually cause permanent hearing damage permanent hearing damage uh, to give you an uh, example of you know how uh, 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 i mean what is the level of the hearing uh, uh, i mean now sound uh, is if in a crowded room you have to actually uh, if, if there is ambient noise, and you actually have to raise your voice to make the other person hear you, or you have to ask the other person to speak up to uh, be able to hear that person. That means that noise, that ambient noise is around 75 decibels. So yeah, you can understand if there is ambient noise, there's noise in your environment, and you're not able to understand each other when you're conversing, that is that level of uh, uh, sound is. 75 decibels. So uh, a little bit below that, 70 decibels, and prolonged, you know, the exposure to noises uh, of around 70 decibels lead to hearing loss uh, in the long run. So uh, uh, you have to be very careful about uh, uh, using the hearing aids. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, headphones at what level? So the general rule is 60 percent, 60 minute rule. So th th that is that is a, a good rule. Never ever you know put up the volume, jack up the volume of the headphones or the device above sixty percent of its maximum volume uh, capacity. If any device, any uh, you know uh, mobile phone or computer has uh, I mean its volume uh, is at hundred, don't put the volume up more than sixty percent, and try and limit the usage to about sixty uh, minutes. Uh, 60 minutes at a stretch. Now, this is a bit unfeasible. I mean, uh, uh, it's not really feasible in today's uh, uh, day and age because so many people are spending so many hours on the phone, on the computers with uh, clients uh, at work, and also you know uh, uh, classes, etc. So that becomes a bit difficult. So it's, it makes it even more important that we limit uh, the uh, uh, intensity of the sound, say probably to less than 60 decibels, which is uh, relatively comfortable for the ear. So that is a very, very vital thing that we must uh, uh, keep in mind. For parents, uh, there's a rough, uh, you know, the thumb rule uh, that if you can hear what your child is hearing with, with the headphones from about, say, uh, uh, one hand or you know, two arms distance away, then your child is listening uh, the, the, 
music or whatever uh, much louder than he or she actually should so ek theke du ha to dure jodi apni shunte pan apnar bachcha ki shunche tahole seta kintu banchilo na bol inte koman to ashe so that is a uh, you know a rough guide জেনারেলি যে ডিভাইস ইউজ করছেন তার সিক্সটি পার্সেন্টের বেশি যেন ভলিউমটা না সেট করা যায় না করা হয় অ্যান্ড হাউ ডু ইউ প্রিভেন্ট দিস মানে ইটস ভেরি ইজি টু সে নট মোর দ্যান লিমিট লেস দ্যান সিক্সটি ডেসিবল ইটস ভেরি ডিফিকাল্ট ইউ নো টু মনিটর দ্যাট সো দের আর সার্টেন ইউ নো থিংস দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান ইউজ দ্যাট ইজ দের আর সার্টেন ভলিউম লিমিটিং হেডফোনস উইচ ইউ ক্যান ইউজ Uh, having said that, even volume uh, uh, limiting headphones probably can deliver sounds up to 85 decibel. So even then, there is a bit of monitoring that is uh, needed. Uh, there are certain apps that are uh, free apps which are downloadable, which can uh, you know uh, monitor uh, uh, the level of sound. Uh, you can use uh, you can use them. In fact, iPhone apparently has uh, hearing or some kind of an app. where you can uh, uh, measure the uh, sound quality and then uh, uh, adjust the uh, volume of the headphones accordingly a very good thing to use is noise cancelling headphones and not what uh, the, uh, the real advantage of noise cancelling headphones is it might be a bit expensive but you know, the advantage is that if the ambient noise is cut off then the child does not really need to uh, uh, put the volume of the uh, uh, device up uh, uh, to crank it up uh, to be able to hear so that is that is a good idea to use and definitely headphones the ones that cover the ear the big ones they are much better than ear pods or you know earphones anything inside the ear that actually funnels the sound right into the uh, ear drum that has a potential to cause greater damage so big headphones uh, covering the ear which are comfortable which do not you know uh, especially you know if they are long uh, uh, hours of classes or long hours of at work then you know having a, a earphones with a small which are pressing on the uh, external ear the pinna kane loti ro pore chap dicche eta kintu khub koshto hoy in the long run onek onek dhoroner samoshya hote pare so large headphones je gulo kane ro pore boshbe those are much more uh, advisable uh, Now, one little thing I must say. Uh, I mean, uh, I started a bit uh, prolonged hearing loss. There's also uh, one thing we must. Uh, uh, I just mentioned in passing is hearing loss. Uh, in the beginning, I I talked about sudden. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. It is. It is yeah. audible. I, 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 you are audible, audible. No? I, I just thought. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you are audible. Lost the, the connection. Okay. So I mean, hearing uh, 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 hearing loss. Uh, uh, one thing that I would like to tell you is, when if ever you feel that there is uh, you know some blockage in the ear, ear feels full, block or sala lege gaye, that kind of a thing, a very simple thing that you can do uh, at home. to uh, you know uh, quickly assess whether this needs attention straight away or not okay what you do is uh, close your mouth uh, i just stop sharing the screen here so that i can uh, you can see me uh, i stop sharing for a quick second here i want to show you something can you see okay so what you do is you sit and close your mouth and make a humming noise like this mm, a loud humming noise and so suppose uh, uh, you are having the problem in the right ear you feel that the right ear is blocked and you make this humming noise mm, what you want to do is you want to ascertain or you want to uh, uh, make out which ear you can hear your louder in is it equal in both ears or is it louder in one ear so when you do this humming noise if you hear it louder in the affected ear then there is less reason for worry mane nijer hum jokhon hum korchi amar nijer gola tai jodi ami je kane samoshya ache sei kane shunte pai tahole tate oshobodhinik tension er byapar nei ek dui ek din pore gelo hobe kintu but if you can not hear in, in the affected ear but it is heard 
uh, in the other ear, then if it's uh, a medical emergency, it needs to be seen uh, immediately so that uh, you know uh, uh, appropriate treatment can be seen because uh, uh, sometimes if you cannot start treatment within the first uh, six to twenty-four hours, then there might be permanent hearing loss. Right? Uh, just a second. I'll start sharing my screen again. Uh, right. So, uh, sudden hearing loss can happen due to uh, multiple reasons. If it is because of cold, or you know, uh, if it is because of the mid ear, then it is definitely treatable. If it is in the inner ear, then it needs urgent attention. Prolonged hearing loss, uh, you know, uh, they cannot hear very well. But they keep, uh, uh, you know, uh, postponing. They say, nah, I don't uh, go out much. Uh, I can live with this, uh, etc., etc. Now that is a very, very unfortunate thing because, you know, when you cannot hear very well, you are actually straining to hear, and that makes you tired. And then progressively, as the patient cannot hear, they start to become isolated. Even in the home, even at home, if they're not able to talk to the family members and uh, uh, slowly start getting isolated. And because they become isolated, they start getting depressed. And over a period of time, if the hearing uh, you know, uh, 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 loss is not corrected, then there is loss of clarity of speech and also a quicker cognitive decline. So never let anyone suffer from prolonged hearing loss. If there is a hearing loss, there are ways of treating it that needs to be treated. Simple hearing aid. Nowadays, no one bothers. Even you know, uh, uh, if you walk out on the streets, you uh, you can see uh, you know eight out of ten people wearing something on the ear. Either it's a, a headphone or a earphone or whatever. Uh, so no no one really bothers uh, uh, whether it's a Bluetooth device or anything. There are so many uh, hearing aids which are very uh, you know concealable and uh, which can easily make it uh, you know uh, uh, easy for the patient to hear and enjoy life. And if there is any treatable condition or it is a correctable condition, that can always be treated. So which brings me to nasal allergies. Uh, nasal allergies are a very, very common thing that we, that we see in uh, our uh, uh, present day scenario with uh, so much of pollution uh, uh, that is happening uh, all around the world. Nasal allergies are on the rise. And along with nasal allergies, what is important to understand is that 70% of patients who have nasal allergies will end up uh, developing asthma. Uh, so it becomes very, very important for us to treat uh, nasal allergies. So what are the common causes of nasal allergies? Commonest causes around us are pollen, uh, which is from trees and flowers and all of that. Then dust, uh, you know, dust might and uh, uh, that's a very common cause of uh, 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 allergy in the household setting. And uh, pets, dog and cat dander, hmm? uh, these are all very, uh, very common uh, uh, allergens. Also, you know, uh, there are certain other things like food and, uh, you know, these mosquito repellents, uh, 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 all of these uh, uh, oils, they are a very common cause of uh, nasal allergy. So what, what uh, how, how do we deal with these uh, nasal allergies. Uh, the uh, simple thing is, uh, the most important thing is avoidance. So uh, how do you avoid uh, uh, pollen? Uh, what you can do is you know, make sure that between 4 and 8, uh, early morning 4 to 8 and evening 4 to 8, the doors and windows are closed because that is the time when, you know, the pollen count is maximum in the air. And a renur matta avohar shabche bishpake and you know where the uh, uh, mask or anything is going out and uh, 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 make sure that there are no uh, perfume or other you know potted uh, plant uh, around um, uh, in your uh, immediate vicinity and uh, you know um, uh, and if there are any potted plants keep them in the balcony not within the house. Uh, and if they are within the house, then they should be uh, the one at the time that do not have flowers. Uh, dust. How do you do that? Regular dusting of the house, but not uh, ordinary dusting. The best dusting is done with a moist cloth, which is run dry. 
so that when you're dusting, the dust does not, uh, you know, uh, uh, rise in the air. It does not start flying all over the house. They can purono bite it up, unpeeled, bite it, it's some dusty, but people who have allergies, they start sneezing and they have a, a, a difficulty. So uh, the best thing is to do a dusting with a moist cloth or uh, do uh, uh, machine cleaning, like vacuum cleaning. Uh, so that, that is a very good idea. Uh, pets, uh, uh, if you have allergies, it's best to avoid uh, having pets. And even if you have pets, then the pets should not be allowed on the sofa or in the bed or in the bedroom. They should be, uh, they should be debarred from these areas. So that is a very important thing. Uh, food, you have to uh, identify the kind of food that you uh, uh, are allergic to and uh, avoid those. And uh, so far as mosquito repellents are concerned, mosquito, uh, the mosquito repellents, I mean, it's best to actually have, you know, Netlon or those kind of uh, things to prevent the mosquito coming in rather than use these kind of uh, mosquito repellents. Also, there are other, you know, the, uh, uh, other kinds of uh, machines which have, uh, which emit a light and actually catch these insects, not just mosquitoes, also other flying uh, uh, insects, those are probably much better than using these kinds of oils and chemicals. Now, this is a nasal douche. This is a very good thing. You know, in uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, Indian uh, uh, tradition, we had this uh, uh, idea in uh, Kriya in uh, uh, yoga called Jal So it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, thing, actually. What you do, do is you clean the nose with some fluid. Uh, uh, people who have done yoga and who have mastered uh, Jalneti, they will tell you that it is such a wonderful thing to keep the nose uh, clean. Uh, how, the, uh, uh, how do we advise it? Uh, Jalneti is a difficult task to uh, master, but uh, so far as nasal douche is concerned, what you need to do is just boil a liter of water, pull it down till it's lukewarm. And then add a small teaspoon of salt uh, and a small teaspoon of baking soda, kava soda, not uh, uh, washing soda or uh, anything else. Baking soda, not baking powder even. Baking soda, ramnai uh, soda to that. One small teaspoon in a liter of water and take a 20 cc syringe without the needle. Draw the uh, syringe, lean into the sink and push the water into the nose. Keep breathing in and out your mouth. Uh, do not snip up. Let the water just go in and passively clean the nose. Uh, so eight to ten syringes on either side. Just wonderful works wonderfully well for uh, 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 clean the nose and to uh, give you a clear nose and also to wash away all the allergies. Another good way of treating uh, uh, nasal allergies is especially the one that uh, I mean uh, from pollen. If you are allergic to pollen, uh, it is best to identify that is to have locally produced honey every day. One spoon of locally produced honey works really wonders to desensitize uh, patients. Another common thing is nose beads. Uh, it's a very scary, especially you know, in winters uh, uh, and if they are uh, you know, elderly people at home, uh, especially people who are on blood thinners, have got high blood pressure, etc. Uh, so nose beads can be very troublesome. The important thing to uh, understand is uh, like the ear, even the nose does not uh, like anything going up is, uh, 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 or you know, uh, probing into it. So, picking the nose is a very bad habit. Not from the Purishkar Prabhupada. Please do the douche that I told you just a few minutes ago. That will keep the, keep the nose closed. If there is any mark, that will come out. Uh, but do not pick the nose. Picking the nose or blowing the nose too hard, uh, too hard can actually cause injury to the nose uh, because the nose is very vascular, it's got a lot of blood supply. So it, uh, the blood vessels can rupture very easily and you know it can uh, uh, cause a nosebleed, uh, especially if there's high blood pressure or patient is on blood like uh, Ecosprain and uh, medicines like that to keep the blood uh, fluid and not clot, then it can become very uh, troublesome. So nose picking is absolute no. So what do you do if you have a nosebleed? Uh, you do uh, what is shown on the, uh, on the left of the picture. Pinch the nose on its soft part, lean forward and sit. Pinch the nose, lean forward, keep your mouth open and keep breathing in and out your mouth. How long do you pinch? You pinch it for full 10 minutes. Within this 10 minutes, do not release the pressure to see 
if they, uh, you know, uh, uh, this thing, uh, the uh, nose sleeve has stopped. Continuous pressure for 10 minutes on the soft part of, of the nose, not the upper part of the nose, the lower part of the nose. Nothing, I'm not dictated. Do do I need it? Check it. Do it after the 10 minutes. And you can apply some uh, ice uh, at the uh, between the eyes uh, over the bridge of the nose also. And uh, if it stops, well and good. If it doesn't, then you need to come to the hospital straight away. Now, why scare? Now, uh, uh, because uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm talking especially to the uh, teachers and uh, you know, staff and uh, students who have actually have to talk a lot. Now, uh, very common, uh, common people who you know uh, are professional uh, using their voice for their profession, they end up with lots of voice problems. And the commonest of these problems are vocal nodules, or what you call streamers nodules, or teachers nodules, singers nodules. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, actually caused by uh, excessive uh, use of the voice, uh, uh, vocal cords, and the shouting. So you have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, you know uh, we do not shout, we do not whisper. Vocal hygiene is a very uh, important uh, uh, concept. So. Shouting is very bad. Whispering is even worse. So, how do you uh, teach a class uh, 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 of uh, you know many students? You can use a public address system, or you know you can also use what you call a caller mic. These are not very expensive, uh, available in places like Chandni and etc. Caller mic will make make it very easy for you to talk in a normal tone. So the best thing is to talk at a normal tone and with pauses. Do not talk continuously. Talking continuously actually puts a lot of pressure on the vocal vocal cords, right? And uh, you have to realize that the vocal cords actually uh, strike each other. They vibrate at a frequency of between 100 to 600 hertz. That is per second they are, uh, 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 you know, vibrating. Uh, they are uh, uh, clashing against each other for 100 or uh, 100 to 600 uh, uh, times. Uh, per minute. So this this is a very very uh, uh, you know high rate, and if we are constantly abusing our voice, then a part of the uh, uh, vocal cords uh, uh, can get injured. There can be uh, bleeding there, and that can give rise to uh, all kinds of problems like vocal nodules, uh, vocal polyps, etc. etc. Et so uh, like I said, uh, pauses, regular sips of water every ten minutes. Take two small sips of water uh, to keep your throat moist, and uh, do not shout, do not whisper even. Whispering is even worse. That puts greater pressure on the vocal cords. And if you have a hoarse voice, do not gargle. Very often, it so happens that patients uh, uh, come to us and say, I have uh, been having a hoarse voice, gala pushe kase, gala chokai kase, I mean, gargle kase. Gargle, gargling when you are having a hoarse voice is a strict no. It is a very wrong thing. You are putting even more pressure on your vocal cords. So instead, what you want to do is steam. Take lots of steam inhalation. Voice test. Do lots of steam inhalation. You can take some, uh, you know, uh, uh, hot uh, beverages like, uh, you know, uh, uh, tea with ginger or hot soup, chicken soup or, uh, you know, hot soup. Uh, so those kind of things. You take lots of steam. Steam is very good for your uh, first voice. And speech therapy. Speech therapy is very, very vital if you are having uh, post, uh, uh, voice problems. Uh, so. Uh, why do uh, uh, I mean, uh, singers, you know, classical singers, why do they do riyas for hours together? Uh, uh, because they are training their vocal cords to, you know, function at, uh, in a way that they do not add pressure on the vocal cords. Because, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you, your voice is your uh, uh, identity, uh, that kind of a thing. And, you know, uh, uh, for people who are actually using the voice can constantly, it is a uh, means of livelihood, you cannot afford to lose your voice. So uh, training your voice is very, very important. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, voice issues, uh, you might need speech therapy. Vocal hygiene, like I was saying, uh, no shouting, no whispering, and you know, talking with pauses and regular sips of water. These are all very, very important and vital issues for uh, uh, people who use the voice regularly.
I think that's uh, about as much as I want to uh, cover today. Thank you. And Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your valuable time. We are really blessed to have you, sir. Uh, so let's start the interactive session. Uh, sir, I have a question. Can I ask you, yes. sir? Of course, of course. Of course. Uh, sir, uh, I have a I have a daughter of two years, ten months old, mm -hmm. and my question is: Is frequent earwax formation is problematic for a two and a two to three years baby? And frequent ear washing at doctor's clinic is it okay? See, ear ear washing. I mean, uh, the, uh, see, quite often, uh, I mean, some children, especially I mean, they have frequent colds. They can develop uh, more wax. Also, the one thing is encourage your child to chew more because chewing motion with so chewing motion wax is expelled. So, bachara jar na, ibasha bachara ano shaman na khai na mane tikkar chibol na. They they swallow their food uh, very easily, which is not a very good thing. So, you have to encourage your child to chew. And uh, some children can have you know excessive wax formation. And if that needs to be clean, it needs to be clean. There's not, nothing really to worry about. But what I'll advise is once you've had your child's ear cleaned, uh, keep using uh, uh, regularly. Keep using. If there is no infection or anything else, you can probably you know use uh, light olive oil, pure light olive oil, uh, from the day the child's ear has been cleaned, so that you know it prevents accumulation. Despite that, sometimes you know if a uh, uh, child has a narrow canal or a patient has a narrow canal, wax can still accumulate. You might have to go to the doctor. It does uh, cleaning the wax itself does not cause any problems uh, unless it's being cleaned with water, which is uh, kind of now an obsolete method. Cleaning with you know the syringing, it's now an obsolete method. We don't like to do that very uh, very much now. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah. Now I am requesting um, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, Principal, Hiral Mojumdar Memorial College for Women for the end session. Madam, please. Uh, thank you, Shoma. Thank you, Shoma. And it is uh, really an in informative uh, session. Uh, we have learned a lot. It would be our privilege if uh, Dr. Mohan honors us by another lecture in some other sessions. Because we, the aging people after 50s, uh, that is a question also to you, sir. We, the uh, aging women after 50s, uh, suffer a lot due to our uh, ear, and uh, we, the teachers, have some throat problems also. How to take care of that? And once I visited, uh, a doctor, I would not name uh, the doctor, he said that uh, there is a problem in my ear, that is the cord is drying up. So, uh, just uh, he suggested to use olive oil for that. Is it okay or is there any precautionary uh, measure uh, for uh, care of uh, aged people? See, I mean, uh, uh, care, care is the same for everyone. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, I couldn't understand the cord drying up in the ear. Uh, see, I mean, uh, uh, if the ear canal is dry, if the ear canal is dry, then like I said, I mean, uh, 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 olive oil works pretty well to actually modify the ear. And uh, the other thing is, uh, try not to clean the ears with a cotton bud. Because uh, you know, quite often we try, we try, uh, we try to think that okay, there might be some uh, you know wax in the ear, so let's clean it with a cotton uh, pad. What we end up is we uh, doing is we we end up removing the wax, the sediment, which actually uh, uh, the sediment is actually a protective and moisturizing uh, layer on the uh, ear. So that that we have to uh, uh, prevent. Uh, also, we have to check if we have dandruff because some people who have dandruff can have more, uh, you know, itchy ears. So uh, uh, that, but the drying, the drying up part, I didn't really understand. Maybe 
uh, he meant about this canal because otherwise he wouldn't have uh, you know prescribed the or advised you to use this uh, olive oil. Uh, okay, thank you. Were, you. Uh, was I able to answer hmm. your question? Was I able to answer your question? Yeah. Is, is there anybody else who wants to ask anything? Uh, Ma'am, may I ask one question? Yeah, of course. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohan, for such a wonderful lecture. And uh, it's our privilege to have you. Uh, I, would, I would like to ask one question that uh, during this COVID time, is there any suggestion from your part that uh, how we can take extra care of our nose, um, uh, especially uh, we know that we are inhaling uh, this virus through the nose. So, um, I mean, is there anything which we can do on a regular basis so that we um, we do not get infected with the virus. I mean, so the most important thing is to make sure that you are wearing the mask properly. Uh, wearing, wearing the mask properly is very vital. The mask should actually cover the nose and the mouth uh, at all times. And you know, uh, it should not be slipping down. And uh, uh, ideally, it should be one with the nose pin and you pinch the nose pin uh, over the nose. Uh, so uh, it should be a tight fitting mask. Uh, so that, that is the best method and also to not touch our nose or mouth or even eyes with uh, hands which are not washed or sanitized immediately before. So heart na bie, without washing our hands or sanitizing our hands, we should not touch our nose, mouth or ear. And the other thing is once we are back home, we can clean the nose with, uh, uh, with uh, you know, we can douche and clean the nose. Uh, 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 if you have followed my lecture, I mean, I uh, uh, showed you a uh, slide about how to do the nasal douche. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, in you know, one of these uh, uh, sessions, we can actually demonstrate how to do that. But it's basically what you do is you boil a liter of water uh, for 10 minutes uh, and then cool it down till it's lukewarm. Once it's lukewarm, then you add a small teaspoon of salt and you can take a 20 cc syringe, injection syringe without the needle. And then you uh, 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 fill the uh, syringe with the water and lean into the sink. Keep your mouth open. Like that. Just let me show you. Keep your mouth open. You're breathing in and out your mouth. And then you put the syringe in your nose and uh, push the water into the nose uh, with moderate force. So then it goes right up to the nose, uh, right up the nose, and then comes out. So do not push it too far, uh, forcefully. And when you're doing this, do not sniff it up. Do not. Let the water go up the nose and come out through the nose. Part of it will come out through the other nose, part of it will come out through the uh, mouth as well. Basically, what this does is it actually cleans the nose of all secretions and any allergens and dust and you know, any pathogen also that we have inhaled through the day. And if you've been wearing the mask diligently, properly throughout the day, uh, uh, throughout the day then uh, likelihood of anything happening is uh, pretty uh, less. Uh, a mask worn properly gives us a surgical mask at least. Gives us about 90, 97% uh, you know, protection from uh, COVID. So th these are the few things that you can do. And maybe some steam inhalation. That's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, once again. Uh, is there any question from uh, the participants? So uh, we are at the fag end of the session and really it was wonderful session and uh, thank you the word thank you uh, really thank not you enough to convey our gratitude to you and of course the organizers from cmri on behalf of all the Maybe teachers can... staff and students we are really thankful uh, to Sarai and Dr. Mohan, and would like to have such conversations with you. And I request Mr. Sandeep and other uh, his other associates to organize such eliminating sessions for us, or to collaborating hospital. 
to end of the session. Thank you, ma'am. We will do that again. Thank you very much, Dr. Ghosh, for the wonderful opportunity and uh, cordial uh, this thing. Uh, like you said, if you work, uh, 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 if you are interested in further topic, uh, I would actually suggest that you uh, come up with a topic that you want to hear more about. So maybe that that would interest you more. So maybe you, uh, you know uh, it would be more uh, in line with our uh, you know needs. Uh, I thought I might uh, today start off with a general overview about how to care uh, because there doesn't seem to be much awareness about these issues. So the next time, certainly we are more than happy to, you know, uh, uh, come up with a discussion that might be right uh, uh, according to your wishes. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you, madam. Now it's time for a vote of thanks. Uh, first, I would like to thank our eminent speaker, Dr. NVK Mohan Sir, for giving us uh, his valuable time. I would like to thank our principal madam, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, for his continuous encouragement. Dr. Rupa Shen, IQAC coordinator, Dr. Pradipta Mukherjee, seminar subcommittee convener, Dr. Lipika Mollik, Bar Sir, Dr. Pradip Dash, TCS or Teachers Council Secretary of our college. I would also like to thank CMRI Hospital for collaborating with us. We are really looking forward to work with you in near future. I would also like to thank our technical team, Srimati Atri Vattacharya and Srimati Puja Dash for their continuous technical support. And also like to thank our department, Department of Food and Nutrition, for continuous support all the time. And last but not the least, want to thank all the participants. And a little announcement, all the participants are requested to fill up the feedback uh, form or link, which is given at the chat box for getting the e-certificate. Thank you all once again. Stay safe, stay healthy, and good night. Yeah.